Welcome back! In the previous video, we looked at a couple algorithm strategies. In this video, we'll look at some specific algorithms. The goal of this video is to build up your context as a programmer. Every time you see how someone solves a problem, that's one more connection in your brain that you can go back to to help you solve your own problems. We'll be looking at four algorithms. The first two are for searching an array, linear search and binary search. The last two are for sorting an array, insertion sort and selection sort. These two are alternatives to the merge sort that we saw in the last video. Here we go. Searching for a specific value within an array is a very common task. So common, in fact, that our programming languages have it built in with such methods as index of and find. But how does it work? And what about those cases where we have to write it ourselves? The basic approach to searching an array is called linear search. It's pretty straightforward. We start at one end of the array and check each value one by one until we find what we're looking for. We may get lucky and find it in the first spot, or we may get unlucky and have to check the entire array before we finally find it in the last spot. On average, we'll probably have to search about half the array. Although it's also possible that what we're looking for is not in the array in which case we still have to check every slot before we find out that it's not there. This algorithm is called linear search because it goes in a straight line checking each value one by one. But is there a more efficient algorithm? Well, not really, unless we change one thing. Let's put our array in sorted order. Now can you think of a more efficient way to search for a letter? we can use an algorithm called binary search. You've probably done something like this when you looked for a particular chapter in a book. You open the book, see what chapter you're at, and from there you either turn backward or forward depending on whether the chapter you want is before or after. A binary search always starts at the middle of the array. Let's say we're looking for the letter H. It checks the value in the middle and determines that H is before that value. Now we know we don't even need to look at any of the values to the right of this point. We eliminate half the array from our search in one step. Next, we jump to the middle of the remaining letters. H is after this letter. Now we eliminate everything before this point. In this step, we again reduced our remaining search space by half. The process continues, jumping to the middle of each remaining half until we land on the value. Can you see why this is called a binary search? The word binary relates to having two things. Each step of a binary search, it divides the remaining array into two halves. Now notice that it took us three hops to find the H, and that's the worst case. For an array of seven values, the binary search will find the value we're looking for in an average of 2.4 hops, and three hops at most. Compare this to a linear search, which averages four hops and seven at most. The advantage is even more obvious for larger arrays. The worst case for a binary search of a million elements is only 21 hops. When you're working with a lot of data, the choice of algorithm really matters. We'll talk more about that in the next video, but first, let's look at two more algorithms. Time to sort some cards. You can probably sort a hand of cards without even thinking about it, but what if you need to sort a thousand cards? You're going to need a plan. In other words, you're going to need an algorithm. We saw the merge sort algorithm in the last video as an illustration of divide and conquer, but people have developed dozens of different algorithms for sorting an array, each with its own pros and cons. Today, I'm just going to introduce you to two of the basic ones, insertion sort, and selection sort. Here's the basic idea of insertion sort. We start out with an unsorted array, or a pile of cards in our case. One by one, we take a card from the unsorted pile and insert it into the right place in our hand. Each time, we search for the right place and insert the value by shifting others over, and repeat until all the cards are sorted. This is called an insertion sort because the sorting happens by inserting cards into the right spot. Now let's compare this 
to a selection sort. Selection sort looks like this. Lay out the unsorted cards. Search for the smallest one. We'll have to loop through all the cards in order to make sure we've found the very smallest. Ace is the smallest. Now take it and add it to the sorted hand. Look through again for the next smallest. Three is the smallest. Keep repeating this search and play cycle until there are no more cards. You can see why this is called selection sort, because the sorting is done by selecting the value to add next. It's interesting to compare and contrast insertion and selection sorts. It turns out that both are similarly efficient, but each has its own tough spots. In insertion sort, the hard work comes in the insertion. First, we have to find where the card belongs. Fortunately, since it's going into an array that's already sorted, we can use a binary search to find the spot it belongs. But then, before we can insert, we may have to shift some cards over to make space. This is where the main inefficiency comes in the insertion sort. With selection sort, the hard work comes in the selection. Every time, we have to loop through the entire array to search for the smallest card. But once we found it, it goes right onto the end with no shifting. Overall, insertion and selection sorts are two of the simplest sorting algorithms. They work in different ways, but are similarly efficient. Before finishing this video, I want to point out some things about sorting in general. These facts are particularly relevant to you in the language you're learning at Grand Circus. First, the purpose of all sort algorithms is to take elements that are in an unknown order and arrange them in a sorted order. That could be numerical, alphabetical, or by some other criteria such as country landmass or population. And it could be ascending, such as A to Z, or descending, such as Z to A. As a programmer, you will be able to use the sorting capabilities that are already built into your language, but you may need to specify which criteria you want to sort by. Secondly, most sort algorithms, including the three we looked at in this series, are in a category called comparison sorts. This means that they work on the principle of comparing two values at a time to determine which comes first. Each algorithm keeps comparing many different pairs of elements in the array two by two and rearranging until all the elements are fully sorted. The function that compares each pair of values is what eventually determines the final order. That wraps it up for this video. We walked through four well-known algorithms. Linear search, which works for any data. Binary search, which works for sorted data. Then insertion sort and selection sort. I hope this got you thinking about different ways to solve problems and work with arrays. I encourage you to explore some other algorithms as you have time. There are great articles, videos, and animations online for all of them. Writing these algorithms in code is also an awesome way to grow and challenge yourself, especially as you continue to mature in your skill set after bootcamp. In this video, we already did a lot of comparisons between algorithms, but in the final video, we'll look at a standard metric for rating and comparing algorithms.